Welcome back friends, this is Steve, KM9G, and we have a Signal Link USB sound device and an ICOM, ICOM 706 Mark II, just a plain old Mark II. And we are going to make FT8 awesomeness today. Stick around. Tigertronics Signal Link USB. This is a way to get um, older radios that don't have a built-in USB sound card, um, built-in USB port on their own that has a sound interface coming out of it. Uh, so my FT891 has a USB port, but there is no sound interface. So I need something like this. And since I have this, this also works with the ICOM 706, which is what we're going to show you today, is how to hook this thing up to the ICOM 706 and get it ready. So the first thing I've got to do is deconfigure it, unconfigure it, reconfigure it from 6-pin mode into not 6-pin mode. Um, so what I've got is a bunch of different things. First off is the signal link with the existing configuration chip in it. I'll show you that configuration chip in just a second. And the cable. And then I also have a 13 pin DIN plug, DIN style cable with a ICOM chip and a 13 pin DIN style cable with a Kenwood chip with some jumpers on it because apparently Kenwood uh, radios aren't all the same on their 13 pin connector. We'll get into that when we do this for the um, Kenwood radio, but for now we're doing this for the ICOM 706. So let's get this guy taken apart. A couple of quick thoughts on this is if you only have one radio, this is absolutely fine that it's got all these screws, keeps the case nice and secure, keeps all the inside bits on the inside and the outside bits on the outside. But if you've got more than one radio, um, you might want to consider getting some thumb screws to replace these Allen head screws. So they'll stick out a little bit farther and you can operate them with your fingers instead of having to carry around the Allen wrench. I guess it really just depends on how often you'll be configuring, reconfiguring your signal link. You do have to take all four screws off on the back side and all four screws off on the front side. And then you slide it out. Well, I guess you don't need to take all the screws off on the back side, but I did anyway. Let's put those screws back in. I guess my mind doesn't think take the front cover off to slide the circuit board out. I mean, I can see why that's a thing because of the knobs on the front. But either way, I still think that there should be thumb screws. One less thing to carry if you're taking this thing out in the field. Inside, there is not a whole lot going on. There's a Texas Instruments audio chip, clock crystal, a couple of transformers, some jumpers. I mean, it's a sound card. And then it's a, an interface on the backside. So USB for data to and from the computer and this RJ45 jack for um, getting signals in and out of the radio. So we'll pull out the chip that I use for the six pin cable for ICOM radios and they do send these nice little carrying cases, containers, whatever with some anti-static foam and then I went ahead and put stuff into little Ziploc bags. So that gets that out of the way and 
SLC AB13I, I for ICOM. This works with the 703, the 718, and all 706 models. Note the power jumper is not used in the SignalLink USB model. Good. So there's your 13 pin DIN cable with the RJ45 on one end. And let's get the, the chip out. It's not really a chip per se. It's just SignalLink's way of connecting the signals from left to right so that you can get different radio models in here. There is a silk screened on little notch and there is a little notch on the chip socket and a silk screened in notch on the circuit board. So line all three of those things up. Two of them are already lined up for you, not too hard to do. And then slide this puppy back inside. And then put your screws back in. On the front of the signal link, you have controls for transmit and receive volume levels and controls for delay. And the signal link handles the push to talk circuit. Um, when there is audio coming from the PC, it will initialize the push to talk circuit and open up the radio for you. So let's get that put back in there. And that, and that put back in there. We've got our signal link, we've got our cable, and then I just keep all of the different cables in the box that it came with. Let's get the 706 over here and I will show you the settings, the settings, the way that we connect the signal link to the back of the 706. Hang on. All right, we've got the 706 Mark II here. This is just a Mark II, not a Mark IIG, um, and not a Mark I. Uh, on the back side of this radio are a whole bunch of little connectors and on the side over here is the diagram of what all those connectors are. So it, what you're going to need to do is take your DIN connector and it only goes in one way and there's a little notch and put that in the DIN connector hole in the back side of the radio and then the RJ45 end. I know you guys are on the edge of your seats and haven't figured this out yet all by yourselves. Um, the RJ45N goes in the part marked radio. One other thing you're going to need for your 706 is a CIV cable or cat control cable um, or remote cable, depending on how long you've been a ham, what you want to call this. On the back, there are two ports, um, and it goes into the one farthest away from the DIN port. This is where you plug in your accessory or your RIDI goes in there, um, and then your remote cable goes in there. There will be links in the description down below for these different parts. This is the CIV cable. It is um, three and a half millimeter on one side, and then this is a prolific chip in here that converts this over to a USB serial type of device. So right in there like that. And then obviously you plug your antenna and your power and all the other stuff in that you need when you get back over to your station. Um, let's get a power cable in this and I will go through some of the menu settings while we're here. I've got a power cable that I'll actually reach over here. If I can find it. One of the neat things about this is that the power cable is the same for the ICOM 705 as it is for some of the older Kemla radios. So we've got the power cable plugged in, we've got the CIV cable plugged in, we've got the signal link plugged in, and then we've got our power supplies now plugged in. 
the plugger power supply in. Okay, so my radio was already on the last time I used it. You gotta turn it off. You gotta hold down the lock key and turn it back on, and that gets you into the menu. And there's not a whole lot of menu settings in here. Beep, band beep, auto off, peak hold, backlight, whoop, speech language, speech speed, uh, S level, speech, scan, resume, scan speed, UD speed, auto tune start, PTT tune, pad, quick split, special offset, dupe offset, split lock, filter one, filter two, RF gain, AM noise blanker, power on check, sub dial, CIV address, CIV baud. I had to change this to 19200 and then set the same settings up in WSJTX in order for this guy to pop up and start working. Um, it was set to auto and you can set it to 300, 1200, 4800, 9600, 19200 or auto. And I want 19200. I want all the speed I can get. And then you turn it off and the settings are saved. So let's get over to the WSJTX software and get that configured. Okay, this is WSJTX version 2.2.2. This will probably work with any version of WSJTX or some of the apps that use WSJTX type settings. Um, and if not, you'll probably have enough information out of this video that you'll be able to adapt to other settings that are similar. So you can see over on the left hand side, we have uh, band activity and on the right hand side, we have um, some stations that I've worked in the past that are uh, showing up over here. So we've already got audio decoding, but I'm going to show you all the setup anyway. Let's go up to the file menu and choose settings and in the general tab configure this for yourself and your grid square and all that other lovely goodies goodness that you like um, and then we want to get to the meat of this video which is the radio and the audio settings so under rig you want to pick the 706 mark 2 um, if that's what you have but this will work for the 703 the 706 the 706 mark 2 and the mark 2g I have a 706 Mark II. My serial port is going to be dev TTY USB 0. This is a Linux machine, so that's what it's going to show up as. If you're on a Windows machine, it'll probably be uh, some high COM port number, um, you know, like some number above four. But it's very easy just to pick one here and go through the rest of these things and then hit this test cat button. Uh, the baud rate, you saw me set that on the radio to 19.2, so it's at 19.2. Uh, default data bits, default stop bits, default handshake, no DTR, no RTS, PTT method is set to box, um, mode is set to data packet, split operation is set to fake it, and we hit this test cat button and it should turn green. Cross your fingers, folks. And it's green. So we are good to go on rig control settings. Uh, under audio, um, in the input section, you want to choose the Burr Brown from Texas Instruments USB audio codec that is marked as input. And if you look here, these are all the different audio devices that show up on my Linux machine. Um, but again, I want the one that's marked as input, Burr Brown from Texas Instruments. And then on output, I want to do the same thing. Here's all the audio devices. And I want the one that's marked output, Burr Brown from Texas Instruments. And then I leave these guys at mono and I hit Okay, and now we will set it to CQ mode, and we will hit Enable Transmit, and let's see if anybody comes back. All right, we've got somebody calling us back. All right, we got him in the log. There are a couple of additional settings over here. Um, that you want to be aware of. Uh, one is your power setting. As always, good amateur practice says use the least amount of power necessary to make the QSO. Um, so you can adjust your power meter over here. And then on the left-hand side, you have your signal strength meter. 
And what we'll do is we will get out the shaky cam and we'll take a look at the front panel of the radio and the signal link. We'll make a few more adjustments and uh, see what we can do to make these things change. Okay, what we have going on here is the signal link and the 706 Mark II and an MFJ meter. A couple of settings on the radio. Um, the first thing you wanna do is go into meter and hit that meter button enough times until ALC pops up so you can monitor your ALC level. You wanna make sure that noise blanker is off. Click the menu another couple of times until you get to M4 and change your AGC settings to FAGC. And then we are all set on this side. On the signal link, I have the volume on transmit turned all the way down. I have the volume on receive turned all the way down. Let's go into WSJTX and hit enable transmit. And you see that level there. You see that the meter is at zero. I'm gonna turn the knob all the way up and we stop transmitting. So let's wait a couple of seconds. I'm gonna turn this knob all the way up until I peak this power meter, which is probably gonna be all the way up. But you can see, as I'm turning this up, I'm all the way up and I am at a little over 125 watts, maybe 130, 135 watts right there. We've got transmit on the radio and we have the PTT light was on. And the next thing that we wanna check is our ALC meter. Next time we go into transmit, and you can see that ALC is up a bit, so let's turn that transmit knob down until we get the ALC to zero. And so I am at about the 132 o'clock position on the transmit knob for me, but you're gonna to wanna to change that on your side. Now, let's get over to the WSJTX screen. And let's turn you guys down a bit. Okay, so what we're looking at over here is this receive decibel column, and you can see that it's at zero. Right now we're in the middle of transmitting, so we'll wait until we stop talking so we can start listening. And I'm gonna turn the RX knob on the signal link until that number goes up. And I wanna get that as close to the top as I can without going red. And for me, that is 100% all the way up. All right, so I got a I sent a minus two, I received a minus four. Those are pretty good signal reports. All right, we got the signal link settings all done for the transmit levels and the receive levels, that's taken care of. We got the noise blanker, the ALC, the AGC, and the cabling requirements taken care of, that's all done. We made a couple of contacts while we were tweaking all the different audio levels, that's how good FT8 is. and. Uh, that's how you do it. We even got the meter out to uh, look at how the how the signals are working and, and make sure we're getting the, the most signal strength into the computer and out of the computer. Hope you enjoyed this one. Pause the video, leave a comment below if you have some updates or if you've made this work with your radio. And uh, love to hear from you. Thanks for being awesome.